In this video, we learn the rules for naming binary molecular compounds. We'll start by reminding ourselves about what binary molecular compounds are. They are compounds which contain combinations of two different types of elements. And because we are talking about molecular compounds, we are talking about combinations of two types of non-metallic elements. And a reminder that when we write chemical formulas and name binary molecular compounds, Elements that appear left and down in the periodic table are written and named first. So for example, with nitrogen trifluoride, NF3, nitrogen lies to the left of fluorine in the periodic table, and we write and name nitrogen first. For phosphorus pentachloride, PF5, phosphorus lies to the left of chlorine in the periodic table, so we write and name it first. For sulfur dioxide, SO2, the elements sulfur and oxygen are actually in the same group, the same vertical column of the periodic table. But since sulfur lies below or down from oxygen in the periodic table, we write and name sulfur first. When naming binary molecular compounds, we write the name of the first element in full. For the second element, we change its ending to an eyed ending, and we use prefixes to identify the number of each element present. These rules are probably best shown by our example. The prefixes we use are generally Greek prefixes, so mono for one, di for two, tri for three, and tetra, penta, hexa, and hepta, and so on. So we just need to sort of count in another language and identify the numbers of each element present in a compound using these Greek prefixes. The reason we need to do that is because there are binary compounds that exist between two elements where multiple compounds can be formed. For example, we can see here that at least five different compounds that contain just nitrogen and oxygen can be formed, and we need to be able to name them all. And we do that by using prefixes to identify the number and type of each atom present in the molecule. So let's use those five nitrogen oxides to demonstrate. We see here NO2 takes the name nitrogen dioxide. Nitrogen we name in full first, while oxide takes on the ide ending. And because there are two oxygens in the chemical formula, we get the name dioxide. Now you'll notice I'm not saying mononitrogen dioxide, and I'll come to that in just a moment. Let's go to the next example, N2O, dinitrogen monoxide, where we name nitrogen first and in full, and there are two nitrogens, so we say dinitrogen. We're changing the oxygen, which is the second element, to oxide. And we recognize that there is only one oxygen, so we say monoxide, meaning one oxygen. N2O3, dinitrogen trioxide, again naming nitrogen first and defining how many there are by using the di prefix. And the oxygen changes to oxide with the tri prefix, identifying that there are three oxygens in this compound, dinitrogen trioxide. N2O4, dinitrogen tetroxide, identifying two nitrogens and four oxygens, and again naming the nitrogen first and the oxygen or oxide last. And finally, N2O5, dinitrogen pentoxide, identifying two nitrogens and five oxygens. Now there are a couple of exceptions in the use of these prefixes, and one of them I've already noted. If there is only one atom for the first element, then we drop the mono prefix. So in that previous example, it wasn't mononitrogen dioxide, it was simply nitrogen dioxide. Carbon dioxide has only one carbon and two oxygens. We are not saying monocarbon dioxide, just carbon dioxide, indicating that the lack of a prefix for the first element means there is only one atom for that first element. We say sulfur dioxide, not monosulfur dioxide, and we say carbon monoxide, which contains one carbon and one oxygen, and we only use the mono prefix for the second element. We don't use it for the first element if there is only one atom. Now you'll notice that CO is carbon monoxide and not carbon monooxide. What we do is drop the vowel of the prefix if the element also begins with a vowel. It's really for ease of pronunciation, and so because oxide begins with a vowel, rather than saying monooxide, we say monoxide. Listing a couple more examples, we have N2O4, which is dinitrogen tetroxide instead of dinitrogen tetraoxide, and N2O5 is dinitrogen pentoxide instead of dinitrogen pentaoxide. So again, we drop the vowel of the prefix if the element itself also starts with a vowel. And again, it's just for ease of pronunciation. 
There are also exceptions in naming relating to binary molecular compounds containing hydrogen. And the reason is that hydrogen can only bind to other nonmetals in one way. So for example, H2S, using the naming rules, you might think we name this compound dihydrogen monosulfide. But because there is only one way that hydrogen can bond with sulfur, the formula will always be H2S. And instead of being dihydrogen monosulfide, we're just going to call it hydrogen sulfide. Similarly for HCl, the naming rules suggest we call it hydrogen monochloride. But because there is only one molecular compound that forms between hydrogen and chlorine, we simplify it to hydrogen chloride. There are also some historical exceptions as well. The official name for H2O is water, and the official name for NH3 is ammonia. So don't try to name water as dihydrogen monoxide or even hydrogen monoxide. H2O is water. NH3 is ammonia. It's not nitrogen trihydride or some other combination of prefixes and element names. Other historical exceptions include phosphine, PH3, arsine, ASH3, hydrazine, N2H4, and hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. And you'll note they all contain hydrogen, so hydrogen becomes an exception in multiple ways. These two molecules here, CH4 and C2H6, are hydrocarbons, molecules that contain just carbon and hydrogen, and they are a subset of compounds known as organic compounds. In general, organic compounds have their own set of naming rules, and CH4 methane and C2H6 ethane are part of a different set of naming rules within organic chemistry, which we will deal with later on in this video series.